Okay, so for this video, we're gonna do the UGI, which is upper GI. Um, upper GIs can be done with single or double contrast. For the purposes of the skill, I want you guys to just focus on double contrast. So make sure when you're trying to pull your techniques that you recognize the difference between the two. We're not gonna use this. This side is bad. This side is good. You guys will learn this in lecture, but there's a major difference between uh, the KVP that would be used for single versus double. Single is gonna be 100 to 125 KV because there's no air there. It's just all barium, so it's gonna absorb more of those photons. Whereas barium and air, so a double contrast, is gonna be 90 to 100, and that's because now we've introduced air and we've removed some of the barium. So we still need a higher technique than we would typically do for soft tissue, um, but not as high as we would for single. So double contrast, we want 90 to 100 KV, and then the median patient, we're just gonna do 15, 15 mass. So over here, the very first thing that I am gonna do is make sure that I'm selected to table grid, which I am. Again, with this room, make sure that you are on table grid. That is table top. It is two different things. This isn't gonna fail you, but it will give you points. So we wanna make sure that we're at table grid. We're at a large focal. So I'm gonna bring this up to 90. And then I'm gonna bring this down to 15. And then we're gonna go into the room and get that set up. So in 428, which is where you guys are gonna be doing your UGI, it's a DR room. So that means that the, the IR is retrofit into this. There is no cassettes. You guys do not need to pull cassettes out. Um, for the cassette orientation, I want it to be an 11 by 14 portrait. So land or portrait, so lengthwise, lengthwise portrait, 11 by 14. Um, the textbook says 10 by 12, so 10 by 12, 12 by 14, but I want it 11 by 14 so that you guys have a little bit more margin of error. So moving on in. Just get this out of the way for a minute. We are going to start with the LPO. From there, we're going to go into the AP, and then we're going to do the right lateral for the UGI. So just like we kind of talked about with esophagram, when we're talking about the UGI and where we're going to place our bucky, um, you want to set yourself up for success early on. So with the UGI, it's not up in the neck like the esophagus is, but it is in the upper I would say upper fourth, it's like in the top two fourths of the body. So we wanna kind of have our bucky set up so that it's gonna be in there because if you have it all the way down here or all the way at the top, you're gonna to have a really hard time getting your patient over that. When we have our patient lay down, again, your stomach is on the left-hand side of the body. So when you're doing an LPO and when you're doing the AP, you're gonna to have to center in that direction. So make sure that you give yourself enough room with the patient on the table so you're not having them scoot all around the table to try and get that image. Because, so you want them to be laying on the right side more, a little bit more on the right side of the table. If they're on the left side too much, um, it's gonna create an issue where now they're gonna be straight and then you're gonna have to have them physically move themselves over because this table only goes so far to the right. So if you have your patient and they're on this side, that's not detented. All right, Hannah is gonna be my lovely patient again. I'm gonna have you lay on your back, head on the pillow. First thing I'm gonna do is check to make sure she's straight. Now, um, one of the things I wanna point out with obliques that can impact what you're doing. If you have a patient who has a booty, okay, um, and they're slimmer here, the butt, basically, that soft tissue there is gonna create more of an oblique in the hips than it will in the shoulders, which will be a problem. If you have a patient who's pretty straight down, I would use the big cassette if, they're, if there's not a lot of difference between the two. Um, but if you have a patient who um, does have a larger rear end, like it's more of a Kim Kardashian, uh, then I would use the smaller one, um, just like the shorter one. These are good ones to use for this room uh, for the UGI because these are gonna be a little bit more sturdy than maybe the blue one or the yellow one is, which I don't know where they're in the other room. So from here, I'm just gonna make sure that she is laying straight on her tip in the table. She is, we are good. Sorry, I'm running into you, Sean. So from here, I'm gonna give her very specific rolling instructions, obliquing and rotation instructions. I'm gonna bring this right arm across your, and bend that right knee. And then on the count of three, you actually look like you were, we're going to find out.
up. We, you guys may see me have to adjust her. Uh, I'm going to have you roll to the left. Not yet. One thing to pay attention to, your patients are going to be afraid they're going to fall off the table. So just hold them so that they feel a little bit less scared. Just don't let them fall off the table. Okay. On the count of three. One, two, three. We want her to roll as a log. All right, come back down. All right, perfect. Now, her hips are a little bit more oblique than her shoulders, so we're going to fix that. Roll up. Back. Now we're good. Okay. Unbend this knee a little bit and then bring this arm back. This is a pretty steep oblique. If you look at the shoulder, so this is 90. Look at where the shoulder is in relationship to where 90 is and look at where the hip is. She's probably at closer to a 60, um, 65. A 60 would actually be not available because it's a 30 to 60 degree oblique for the LPO for the UGI. Um, but let's try and get as close to 45 as possible. Just so at this point, I'd be happy if you guys are able to put her in a 45 degree oblique. So I'm gonna unoblique her a little bit, derotate. That's better. Uh, now we're a little bit less. Up, up, down. Okay. This I went the wrong way. I made an error. and then I want 11. 11 by 14 at the 40 inch SID and there we are. Note though how different it looks on her as it does off of her so it's better to do this before you lay the patient down. Don't feel like Miss McDonald. And we may. Yep, we have an error. I'm actually glad this happened. I want you to see I've pulled this table as far over as I can. If you go to the head do you see that I cannot go any further on her? That's gonna create a problem when I'm trying to position. This is why I told you to have the patient lay further on the right side. As for me, this isn't an issue because I've done this before so I know how to adjust it. But for a student who's in skill and is already stressed beyond belief because it's a double skill day, this is an error that we wanna avoid at the jump so that you don't have to critically think your way through this in addition to the two million other things you guys have to think of on a skill. I'm just gonna move her back a little bit towards me. All right, so the central ray for the uh, LPO UGI for a stenic patient is going to be, uh, you're gonna find the xiphoid and you're gonna find the lower, uh, the lower rib margin and you're gonna go halfway between and then you're gonna also go halfway between the spine and the uh, lateral rib margin. So here is her, her excuse me, lower rib margin. I'm gonna probably just use this side. And her xiphoid's right here, so we're just gonna come up a little bit. And then halfway between the two. Now remember again what we're projecting. We're projecting the stomach. She is at an angle right now. So her spine is actually about here. It's a little bit more posterior because she's at an angle. She's, she's, her body is literally at an angle. So right now, we're gonna have elongated a la here. The ribs, the posterior ribs here are gonna be more elongated. The right all is gonna be foreshortened, the right ribs are gonna be foreshortened, um, and then we're moving that stomach this way. So if I were to take a slice right now and I were to just stick a ruler in between the two, right there, I'm gonna intersect with the stomach on the way down. We are just gonna mark right here. She is somewhat of a small patient, so I can get away with that. If she was a larger patient and there's not a lot of light on the side, you can just mark right there and that's fine. The other thing to take into consideration here is that there should not be a significant amount of light here. If you have this much, that is too much. And if you have zero light, that is also not enough. There should just be like a little sliver right there. That's also assuming you're obliqued correctly. If she is over obliqued, you're gonna see more light. And if she's under obliqued, that's potentially gonna be an issue too, okay? so. We're good there. So from here, we're gonna do the AP. So I'm just gonna roll her onto her back, going back onto your back. Now she's at her, she's rotated. If you look at her, she rolled back under her back, but she didn't really adjust her body weight. So I need you to adjust so that you're laying completely flat on your back. So raise your hips up and kind of rest them back down. Raise up your shoulders or like move your middle of your back. There you go. All right. 
she should, for the most part, be um, aligned still. Like here's her lower rib margin, here's her xiphoid, so we're still halfway between those two. I'm just gonna move this over. Remember that the stomach's on the left-hand side, so we wanna make sure we leave the light. This is the left-hand side of her body, right? Do not confuse the shoulder with the outer rib margin. This is her shoulder. Her shoulder is outside the rib margin. This is her rib margin and this is her spine. Do you guys see? So you just make sure that you're looking at the body as a whole, not just certain areas. So we're good right there. Again, I'm going to mark bottom left. If you have a larger patient, you can mark there or you can mark on the table. One thing to be very careful about, make sure that when you mark, your marker doesn't go sideways. That's not gonna help you at all. You're not gonna be able to see anything. The marker needs to be up. So if you have to pull the shirt out, that's fine. But just pull it out and mark like that. Or again, you can mark right there. Okay, moving into the right lateral. I'm gonna have her go ahead and roll all the way towards me on the right hand side. Don't hit your head. And I'm gonna grab a different a little pillowcase for her, or a little pillow for her neck. Bend those knees a little bit for me. And then bring the sh shoulder back. There you go. Too much to come forward. There you go. And then arms up. Be really careful. She just like went karate kid. Be very careful that we don't tell our patients to bring their arms up like they're praying um, because that could offend somebody. All right. Arm down. And then right there. Right there. All right. And then arm up a little bit. It could just have been, remember, again, it's patient care, right? So we always wanna be inclusive towards our patients, no matter what. So just read the room, read the patient. If your patient has a cross on, that might be a good time to tell them to bring their hands up like the praying. If you take a cross off of them, just be, read your patient, read the room, okay? All right, so from here, we wanna find the lower rib margin, which is here. We want our central ray to be there, which it is. And then we wanna find mid-coronal, just here, and then we just wanna come forward about one to one and a half inches anterior, right marker. Now, I have a lot of light here that I don't need, so I'm just gonna bring it back a little bit because I can. Another option is to collimate, but that's okay. And then we're gonna mark bottom right. Right there is fine. Or again, if you have a larger patient, you can just pull this out, mark there. Again, be, just be careful, it doesn't go like that because that's gonna create a problem, okay? Okay. And again, very wide collimation. You could, if you felt brave, collimate in a little bit. And that is the UGI. Now, one point that I wanna make with the UGI is the like patient prep instructions. So with the patient prep, one of the biggest things is that we wanna make sure that our patient is NPO for eight hours prior, okay? Uh, that includes smoking, that includes coffee, that includes water, that includes anything that's gonna involve any type of liquid or anything going into the throat at all. Smoking, liquid, or not liquid, but smoke, I guess, can go into the, into the throat. Um, Pharynx, remember, it's a common passageway. And then with the chewing gum, there's like a liquid there, so nothing, nothing by mouth. Um, and then we wanna make sure if we're doing an esophagram and then a UGI like follow through or we're doing both, we're gonna follow the UGI instructions. Um, but, and so we're gonna make sure that we ask our patient when we come in, we're gonna add the, have you had anything to eat in the last eight hours? Are you, have you been not eating since midnight? Those, did, have you smoked a cigarette this morning? Have you had any water, any coffee, stuff like that? Um, just being mindful of making sure you ask that um, and then changing instructions are gonna be everything from the waist up, especially anything that has metal or plastic. 